and welcome to Defining Your Health. I am your host, Chantelle Neal, sitting in for Miss Tracy Lewis. I know it's a different face, but she will be back with us next week. And today we have a beautiful topic that we want to discuss. Yes. I am not by myself, as you can see. I have Dr. Sanchez, who's no stranger. He's yes. always on Defining Your Health. Dr. Yes. Sanchez is a pathologist. And Doc, we are happy to have you. We yes. also have Miss Lolly Elrington, who's a retired nurse. Sister Everton, we're happy to have you. Thank you. And welcome again to Defining Your Health. Our topic for today is entitled Gospel of Health. The Gospel of Health. And as you can see, we're in a different location. Okay. We're out of the studio. We are at the campaign site at this time in yes. Birds Isle, Belize City. Yes. And um, we're here to talk about our health booth that we have. Yes. Health and wellness booth that is set up right here on site. At the at the um, campaign. Kong, um, at the campaign yes. here at Bird's Isle, that you can come out and to get your to get your full checkup, to get your counselling, to get prayers and all the others. So we want to talk a little bit about why have why have a health boot set up at a campaign. I think I feel like this is the first for us. We've okay. always had health tips from the stage, yeah. but this time we went a little further in having a boot set up at okay. the campaign site and i know you guys have a lot of experiences that you've seen throughout this week yes. um throughout last week as we were here for a week already yes. that you'll be sharing with us but yeah. before i have you talk i want to share what john 10 10 says okay um it says i have come that you may have life and, and have it more, more abundantly, abundantly. christ is interested in our spiritual health but he's yes. also interested in our Physical, physical well-being. Physical yes. well-being. So tell us, what are your thoughts when it comes to the topic, gospel of health? Yeah. We've never thought about the gospel being, the, the health message being the gospel. What are your thoughts on that? My thought is that health is the foundation of the gospel, according to Sister White. Mm -hmm. Because you cannot, or in other words, I don't think it is right for you to be telling the person, yes, you are feeding them the word of God. Yes. But then they are ailing otherwise. So you need to, to do a holistic approach yes. of the entire being. You have the gospel and you have the wellness. Amen. Encouraging that person how to take care of themselves, how to manage their illness if they do, Amen. and do it and how to eat, but eat in a temperate manner. Good. Yeah, Wonderful. And in regards to health, as you know, the health dimension is all encompassing. It involves your emotional well being, it involves your spiritual well being, mm -hmm. it involves your physical well being, and also it involves your mental well being. And those facets need to be addressed for a holistic outcome for a person to be healthy. Yes, you can share the word of God, but the value of the health message or the gospel health is that there are times people may not really want to hear doctrine or gospel per se, but they may be inclined to have the health problem addressed. We in this field have a very important role to bridge, to transition from well-being to spiritual well-being. And many of our health issues, as is said in the book of Exodus 15:26. Right? Where he says that if my people will hearken unto me and obey my health laws, I will bring none of these diseases upon you that I have brought on the Egyptian. And the question you need to ask yourself, what were the diseases afflicting the Egyptians? And when you consider it, they were all diseases of gluttony. It was diseases of intemperance. Wine drinking and partying and eating to excess, and just the abuse of the natural. So 
if we can in a booth address this issue and on a one-to-one -one basis capture the person's attention and let them sort of reflect then we may be in a position to set the stage right for them to be receptive to the gospel because if you are healthy then your thought processes will be healthy and you'll be more inclined to hear the word of God. So the health food is paramount yes. and it's a must and we want the population to know that because of the, the, the message as well, we start an hour before. So you can come an hour before at six to have your wellness check. Mm -hmm. And the wellness check are just basic parameter check. We check your height, mm -hmm. we check your body frame, we check your, uh, your, your pulse ox to see what your O2 stack is, what your pulse is doing, what your blood pressure is doing. If you so desire, we could do a leap finger prick, test your sugar test and see what yes. is on. And then we give you a little paper with a little thing, health is our greatest wealth, take care of it. And if there is any concern, you, I'm available, you could talk with me. If there is anything, we have the health psychologist, health. right, Sister Lucilena, she can discuss the, 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 the psychological aspect with you, right? Also, we have a dietitian, right, Sister Lara, who will be able to discuss. And all these facilities are here, but on a short notice, but at our Seventh-day Adventist Wellness Clinic at Ladyville, that is where we have all the time in the world to go through these parameters and to in depth. Encur encourage you to be healthy. That's wonderful, Doc. That's right. wonderful. For a small fee, you yes. can get this service yes. you know, at the yes. Ladyville Health and Wellness Community Clinic. Clinic. Clinic yes. yes, and when you go there, you will see Miss um, Elwin Tam and you also see, see myself. Sanchez. So that's yes. wonderful. And we are they are ready and waiting to help you to, on a holistic manner, to take care of yourself. Yes, correct. Because when you know how or what is affecting you, and you know how to take care of it, then you will be better able to, to live more healthier. And eat more healthier, especially at a time like now. Yeah. I think it's a wonderful thing that our church has embarked on yeah. um, in terms of linking the gospel of Christ, the spiritual aspect with the health message. Correct. You know, and as we say it here uh, in the Seventh Day Adventist Church, the health message is the right arm of the gospel. Yes. They hand in hand. Yes. The barriers that the, the, the spiritual message might not be able to reach. Yeah. The health message go yes. beneath, go beyond, yes, it you does. know, and deeper yes. than the spiritual. Right. Yes. You guys have had many experiences that you can share that you've you've experienced yeah. during the one week of being here. I know many people has have passed through the booth. Yeah. They have gotten uh, some counseling. They have gotten. Um, physical checkup, you know, they've gotten pamphlets, and these are things that you can get if you come out to come out to our booth. Remember, again, we're open six to seven, right here at Bird's Isle. You can come out and see the doctor, man. Get the physical health, and when yeah. you get your physical checkup, you can also get the message. Message, message from Pastor David Tam. Amen. Amen. I have one for you guys to share with me a little bit of the experiences you've had um, with people visiting the booth. Okay. Well, um, as we have said, Nurse Lolly is the one who do the initial um, assessment and then she will refer them over to me to see. And in my little dialogue with patients, we give counsel mostly in just befriending people. Okay. And many a time that is what comfort them and they feel so satisfied that at least you are attentive or you are caring for their well-being. Yes. And in the, in the dialogue sometimes, you pick up clues, right? For example, I, we had a scenario last night whereby the lady was there and, you know, I saw the paper and it has her name, double-barrel name, so she make it known that she is married, 
right? And then we dialoguing about you know the, the parameters on the the the, 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 um, the, paper. the paper, right? In terms of the weight, the body frame. I said, oh, yo, 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 you know, big woman, man. I say, yo, 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 the BMI, no? And I said that um, your ideal weight is supposed to be like so and so and so, but you are about almost 40 pounds above it. And I said that means that you are, I don't want to use the O word, right? But it means that you're obese. I said, but look at you, you look so nice, you're obese. She started to smile. And then we said, but why are you gaining weight? Because you say you don't eat so and so, you only have you one per spoon of rice. And I said, my advice is to use half of that amount, right? That's it, advice, half of what you normally eat, right? I said, but I said, but if you eat more, it means that something is wrong with you. That is, you're either depressed or you're anxious. And she began to cry. I said, what? He says she just lost her husband. Oh so I said, oh my. I said, so I pulled her and I said, a little prayer. And we counsel and I went and I tell the nurse what happened. She said, oh, so the nurse went and talked with me. And then when the pastor made the appeal for the altar call, I asked her if she'd like to go up. Come up. And she came up and she, you could see that she got lighter. Okay, and um, that is what the gospel of health is about, you know. So even though the word is being preached, we need to be watchful for these situations where yes. people are hurting and how we can address that need, you know. So and that's just a wonderful, wonderful testimony, um, yeah. because that person may have been overlooked, maybe in the, in the, in the house, yes. you know, yes. maybe the yes. uh, maybe the usher may have. The or yes. you know, we assume that okay. Yeah, because when she came to me, she was you, you you from experience. I know something was wrong, but then she, you know, some people tried to use a smile to cover the the, the underneath pain. the pain, the pain, yes. and you know, I talk with her, and that is why I I look on her and I said, I need you to see that. Hold on to this paper for me. Doc is talking to somebody else. As soon as she's, he's finished, mm -hmm. I want Doc to talk with you. And the thing about life is that we as leaders need to be careful because I was a bit rude. Because I tell her, well, I can't be talking with you when the pastor is preaching. Right? So I say, you know, so like, like a, a, a boss laugh. But she was saying, okay, that's understandable. Right? But like suddenly said, no, keep on talking with this young lady. Right? Keep yes. on talking with her. Right? Pastor is preaching. Yes, yes, but. Yes. Right? And that is where God uses supernatural intercessory power to say, listen, this one you keep you keep working with this one, yeah. It's like Philip went now, you go down to God, yes. go down and you find it open, you know. So God is interested to stay on it. So even though I was I don't want to after I keep on talking with her. And then we realized what was happening and she was comforted to know that somebody is care. caring yeah. about her somebody pain, you know. Cares about her. I'm so happy that you listen to this yes. because yes. that's just Yes, physical health, but yeah, that's also true. Spiritually, you, you were able to listen to the spirit, and yes. after that, the yeah. need after yes. the yes. fill the gap that yes. that person came with last night. Yeah. And there are many more, the Lord, there are many, many pray. more. So we just want for you guys, yes, that's stay true. faithful, stay committed. This is your ministry, this yes. Is, you, you're not from the you're not preaching from the pulpit, yes. No, and that's that's fast. That Samuel, that uh, Samuel's. That's his gift. That's his talent. That's yes. his ministry. But the Lord every has placed in has, yes. Every individual in has their state. talent. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. it, that is why, if you remember in the Bible, where the, the, the man with the one tunnel, talent, uh -huh. the one with the ten, the one with the two, uh -huh. and the, the one with the two went and work and get four. And get four. The one with the five, the five get, get ten. Get, get ten. But the wicked one died with the one to bury it. The one that is... Not thinking, yes. not obvious, not observant of what is happening around it. He went and buried his talent. Mm -hmm. What a and He's going to look at the, the master and tell him, I know you is a hard man. So, you want to reap where where you didn't sow. What a wicked act. So we have to, each person has a talent. Yes. And we have to understand we need to use it. Yep. Amen. Yeah. Amen. That's so Amen. Amen. This is not from since we are at the, the crusade here.
But in last week, I was at the clinic, yeah. and this lady came in, well put together. You can she she's, I would say maybe in, a, in the middle class, up. Yeah. And she came in and she said to me, "Is the doctor in?" And I said, "No." Would you like to make an appointment to see him? And he, she said, no, I didn't really want to see the doctor today. Mm -hmm. And I said to her, okay, sit, up, sit a little and let us talk for a while. I offered her a little glass of water and she started to sip the water. And I noticed that eye water was there and she's keep dabbing her eyes. And I said to her, are you okay? And that was like, I just opened a can of worm. Yes. The lady started to express herself. And she started to pour out and pour out and pour out. And I was like, all of this is happening. And I sat there and I listened to her. And I encouraged her. And I prayed with her. And when the lady was going through the door, she said, God, I feel so light. Amen. And I said to her, sit and, and wait a little while. And she spent nearly three hours at the clinic. Amen. And she talked and she talked and she talked and she talked. And I encouraged her. And I prayed with her again. Mm -hmm. And she said to me, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. How much is your cost? Mm -hmm. I said to her, my cost is mm -hmm. that you go home, mm -hmm. forget about the work in the house for right now, mm -hmm. just relax and meditate on the word of God. Amen. And gave her um, a little booklet. Yes. It said, what's the name of the booklet? Uh -huh. um, Pope Beyond Measure, I think. Pope Beyond Measure. Mm -hmm. And I gave her the 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 booklet mm -hmm. and she was she was all smiling going through the door she said to me i will come back yes Amen. and i felt i felt so good that i was able to encourage her pray with her yes. and she went out lighter than when she came in that's the ministry that's a truly that's the ministry that's a medical ministry and, and these are some of the things that that some people may not have pain or any a form of illness but mentally they are burdened they need to have an outlet to let it out and once they let it out they will feel so much better the thing that's the thing that's interesting is that the, the preacher may not have time to Stress those issues, yeah. Occupied with yes. spiritual message out and yes. occupied with preaching the gospel. Yeah. You guys have the time. Yeah. You know, the Lord has given you the, 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 the time and the opportunity to meet different people. Yeah. You know, and you that fill true. you fill that gap and then they stay for the campaign and then the preacher gets to fill the works in hand. Amen. this door is a health worker yes yes every individual oh. because i may overlook something and there comes that hi miss chantel how are you and by just saying hi miss chantel how are you mm. your, your whole entire features change mm. because he is in a happy mood wherein i may feel a little down and I push it across on you, but here he comes and he just lightens the yep. environment. Yep. So each one of us in our own right are a health worker. That's good to know. I never thought about it that yes, way. We all are. I never thought about it that way. Yes. But yes. I know that you always mention that the health is a holistic, the health message is holistic. Holistic, yes. Lifestyle change. That's correct. Yeah. Wait a little bit upon. What does okay. it mean when you say lifestyle change? Okay, well, what I mean by lifestyle change is that, as I mentioned to you in the book of Exodus, that the majority of our diseases are diseases that we brought upon our, on ourselves. Obesity, hypertension, 
diabetes, cholesterol problem, right? All of those things, alcohol consumption, cirrhosis of the liver, cigarette smoking, cancer of the lung, all of these things, are we are driving it on. So that makes it that these are lifestyle disease. So if you, as the scripture says, God honors them who honors him. If we were to be temperate in what we do and be mindful of what we do, then many of the diseases, diseases that afflict us may not really afflict us or we can reverse them, right? And in particular, we think about, um, well, you could think about alcohol consumption. Even though it may be socially acceptable, right? The chronic use of alcohol has deleterious effect, right? Beside the husband beating the wife or the wife beating the husband, right? Or on drunken driving and other incidences, it takes a toll on your human body. It damages your stomach, it damages your brain, it damages in the middle, it damages your, your testes, right? It damages your, your, your liver, okay? So those are things that we can address. They may not want to hear about it. But if you are compassionate, you can bring it to their attention and they may take heed, right? Nutrition is one of the major hallmark or setback for our, for our illness, right? Because we eat indiscriminately and we advocate Balanced meal. Balanced meal emphasizing biologic proteins, your carbohydrate, preferably complex carbohydrate, in contradistinction to refined products, your vegetables and your fruits. And if you consume that meal on a regular, there's no need for no vitamins or not like that. That is healthy food. The problem we're having, which we advocate, is that many of the diseases we're having has to do with animal consumption. And people don't like to talk about their meal, but we have to advocate it. A plant-based diet is a better source of food for human beings. Amen. We call it Edenic diet, in, or, you know, but it is the best. But I am practical and I try to encourage people to do things in moderation, right? And the take home is do a good thing. Add a good thing to whatever you're doing. And with time, that good thing will displace a bad thing and you won't even miss the bad thing, right? It's like what the professor had done with the analogy where he had a vase and he put some rocks in the vase and he asked if the vase is full. And the students said, well, of course, no more rock can go in. They said, And then he went outside and he went and he put some sand in the vase. And then he asked him if it's full. And he said, of course it's full. And he said, well, he went outside and then he put some water in the vase. And they said, what have you learned? Well, one bright student said, well, I, I felt when there's something full, go put more things in it still. And the professor was sad because that wasn't the message he was trying to teach at all. He was trying to teach that if you don't put the important thing in first, there'll be no space for it afterwards. That's a take-home message. Exactly. And the same with us. That is, we need, and my adv I've advice to human beings is that try and get a fruit with each meal. And if you do that, you will realize that we are not eating enough fruit. It's true. Right? A fruit with each meal. That's all I ask for. And the rest will fall in place. So, nutrition is very important. That balanced meal. Exercise is important. Right? If you can join gym, fine. But walking is the best. Swimming, cycling. We just encourage that half an hour of activity. It's very important for the cardio. It's very important for your respiratory. Very important for your brain. And it will make you sleep better. You will function better. Exercise is important. Water. In this hot climate, we Big need water. water. People don't like water. If you want to put lime and drink the water, mean okay. We drink the water. water. Right? We need we eat glasses at least. And I have learned that if you drink it fast, you pee it fast. But if you drink it slowly, it stay on board. Yes. I never know that one day. So I practice it. So if you take your glass of water and drink the whole glass of water over an hour, you will not pee it out. But if you drink the one glass of water, one gulp out, in the next five minutes, you pee it out. 
So that's the only way I learn and I try to okay. encourage people to sip the water and to stay hydrated in times like these. And there are other things we have to discuss as well. Rest, fresh air, and of course, trusting God. Amen. You need to know who your God is. As what Pastor Samuel said, when you come to kiss a dying pillow, you need to know how barley grow. You have to know where your God is. So, Viewers, these and many more counsels you will receive when you come to the health booth. Amen. Amen. Yes. Zach have a whole list and he could go on and on. And on. So, uh, just to wind me up right now. This is just a taste. It's just a taste of what you experience when you come here um, at Bird's Isle in Belize City. Yes. Six to seven o'clock. Yes. So that you receive. It's just a taste here because it continues at their clinic in Ladyville. I want, as we're wrapping up now, Miss Elrington, to share with us. I come to the campaign now. I come to the health booth. Yeah. I come for six o'clock. What can yeah. I expect? Okay. First of all, I make you comfortable. Okay. And by talking to you, I can do your um, saturation. I can do your pulse. Mm -hmm. And by talking and talking, I eventually do your blood pressure. Because if you just come in and I do your, your blood pressure, you won't get a proper reading. Right? Yes. So I just calm you down and I do your blood pressure. I do your weight. Mm -hmm. And then I do your height as well. And when I do all of that mm -hmm. and I look on it and to me something is out of place, I ask you, doctor, can you please talk to this? individual okay. form. That's true. And he will. Amen. As yes. a team, that's his yes, we do. Yes, he's my right hand. And if it if you need much more than that, Doc will tell you, talk to the, me and then I'll tell you more about the health clinic in Ladyville. We also give you a little card that you can find the health clinic and it's easy. Very, very easy to find. And telephone number is right number two. on the highway, and it is opposite Tubal. Okay. Tubal is the telephone yes. number. Yes, there's a telephone number. Do you there. mind sharing it so our viewers could make contact? 664. All right, and while Miss, Miss Elrington is looking for that number, we just want to thank you so much for joining us. We're wrapping up our program mm -hmm. for today. Um, this one is a special edition. Yes. So we're in a different location, a new face. Um, and um, we're talking about the. 664 8843. 664 8843. That's a number that you can contact the Ladyville um, Health and Wellness Clinic. Clinic. When you go there, these are the faces you will see Dr. Hugh Sanchez and Nurse. Lolly Elrington. I want to thank you both for being with me um, today on Defining Your Health. Yes. I pray that whatever we have shared today may, might have been a blessing on to you. Join us again next week for another edition of Defining Your Health. Oh, and before I go, I want to leave you with John 10 10. I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. abundantly. Okay. Thank you. Blessings. Thank you.